Welcome everyone back to Pominals. Hope we're all doing absolutely splendidly this Monday morning. Feels a bit different, doesn't it, when you do wake up Monday morning and you realise that you got a 31-point win against a top four contender in Fremantle Dockers on the afternoon of the weekend, round 15 at Marvel, 81-50. And it was comprehensive, wasn't it, in the end? It, it was really an assured performance about the boys. And it really did dispel the myth. We've been saying the last couple of weeks, obviously they've been playing in the wet. Do you know what I mean? It has affected their usual game plan. But this was a real solid, solid performance. The boys really, I think, set a precedent for what is to come and really sent a warning sign to the AFL. And what I mean by that is... It was only at the start of the week when Brisbane got rolled that people were saying, well, maybe it's not Brisbane. Maybe they aren't the contenders. Maybe it's freer. And this happened earlier in the rounds when we played Sydney. People were talking about Sydney are the favourites to beat Melbourne. And Cowan keep winning. And there's something about them when they play well. And this was a very assured performance because if you look at last week, hardly any inside 50 tackles. Hardly any tackles around the ground. Cowton dominated this avenue this week. Half the inside 50s against doubled their own. And that hasn't happened at Cowton Football Club since I've been a fan, where we've seen adjustments in a week that are so polar opposite. Just seeing Vossi at the minute, the polar opposites from week to week in improvement are huge. And this is a side that is real hungry. And there was something about the culture of the club this week that really came to light. It looked like they were together. They knew they were in a battle. And the signs are good at Icon Park. And it's about time, I think, the media started taking Carlton serious. But also, I think the fan base. I think there's a lot of, you know, people use the excuse, oh, we always lose. Well, if, it depends how far you go back. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I always shit myself at one years old. Do you know what I mean? But I hoped I'd change it. I mean, I learned how to use the toilet. Do you know what I mean? How far back are we going? Do you know what I mean? Because if you actually look at the lineage of this football club, it is winning and success. So I know it's easy content. It's an easy post. I made a career out of it for two years doing this, just being upset and angry at losing. It's easy content. I'm telling you, it's brainless. Do you know what I mean? It's harder to find constructive praise and criticism when we win. So let's just chillax. Do you know what I mean? We're, we've won a lot. Enjoy it. Embrace it because I tell you what, right now he needs six more wins to top Bolton's record. He needs 11 more wins to top Teague's record in a year. Like, we haven't seen wins this much and it's a great thing and I'm really enjoying what the boys are about. They are starting to bring pride in the Guernsey. It's, it's, it's a real joy to watch them. Win, lose or draw at the minute because you really do know that they are actually capable of winning. Where before it was you hoped they were. Now they've actually got bodies of work to show these guys are there. So before we get into the fan questions, I can't wait. Big shout out to my wife's company, thequackingcauldron.com.au. If you're into your crystals, you're into your new age things, your witchcraft, your Wiccan, things like that, head on down there. They do sponsor this segment. And let's smash it in and have a look at what you guys and girls have said. So the first one is me mate, Saras boy. Might be getting carried away here, but have Lobb and Cottrell pretty much made picking up a genuine winger unnecessary? Between these two, the rotations, the players we have in the VFL, I'm quite comfortable with our ring wing situation. Am I crazy? I don't think you are. Um, I think Cottrell, O'Brien has definitely nailed that wing. N there's, there's no question. Don't want to hear any calls for Lockie O'Brien to be dropped in this season, or I might drop someone. Do you know what I mean? He's locked it away. Cottrell, definitely. Now, he played a lot half forward this week as well. I think that's his best position, running one way and really getting into it. I think he's a very creative, and he. I, I think sometimes Cal, and in the last two weeks, have become very stagnant outside 50. And I think what he brings really, really well is his ability to be direct. And sometimes Cal and are indirect. Sometimes you need to be direct. And I think that it, he has nailed that position as a rotation. The question mark I have and the guy that I love so much is Jack Noons, who plays a lot of wing time as well. He's my favourite, but I don't think he's long-term. 
So if you can go out, I actually prefer Shaw to aim on just because of the way it complements that wing. So I think maybe Shaw, maybe the goer may come a little bit cheaper. Can't see Amon coming here. I think that lull of St. Kilda and the fact that they just buy outside midfielders for Bance when they need an inside one. I think he may be favourite. But I agree with you. I don't think it's as a dying priority as it was. And I think that gives Austin a lot of options. Big Michael, my boy. How you doing, mate? Eas, Lob Charlie, Walsh and Doc, that is all. They were sensational this week, weren't they? And honestly, it's it, it's a joy to watch. It's a joy to watch. Especially when I think we've got to give a shout out to the B graders in this game as well. It wasn't just the superstars that did the job. It was also the guys next cab off the rank. Do you remember them tier three and tier fours we talked about at the start of the year? But mate, when our best are firing, very hard to beat. And you've got to remember, we haven't seen our best 18 yet. And I think that should terrify the competition because we're up there with West Coast for injuries and forced changes. That's huge. That's a telling because we're getting them back in the crux of the season. And the way the AFL works, that, that them opening 15 rounds and Mickey Mouse, they're really pointless. Like the AFL, the one thing that irks me is we have this long fanny around for the finals. And it's really inconsequential, as Geelong have shown by being minor premiers so many times. Carlton are going to have a full strength side by finals. Look out. Look out. James Griffin, does Stocker come in for Boyd? It's a great question. And let's have a look at Mr. Stocker's game this week. So there he is then. Uh, 30 touches, 24 kicks, 6 handballs, 10 marks, 3 tackles, 2 inside 50, 6 rebound 50s. He, he played a lot higher up the ground in the VFL this week. And he had about seven kick-ins as well to make up them. But that's still pretty fucking good. If you can get around 20 playing that back pocket, high half back, which is what he does, you're always going to be in, in with a shout of getting some de uh, getting game time. Now, what I'm looking at here is, is I think it's going to be very interesting for him because I think Boyd is a different kettle of fish to Stocker, right? So when you actually look at the defensive numbers, people always say Stocker's tough. He's physically tough. But but when you're looking at statistical toughness, which is ground ball gets, defensive pressure acts, tackles, things like that, this guy versus Boyd, Boyd wins, which is very interesting. So they're totally two different players. Now, he's going to have a question here, Voss, a big question, because... This week as well, when Boyd went up, Newman and Doc actually floated in that other back pocket. There may be a little argument here, and I want to put this out to you, and we'll cover it a bit later, that if Wheatering comes back, I actually think when we talk about Kemp a bit later, Kemp is McGovern. Now, the original plan for McGovern was to be that third. Kemp gives you third vibes, and he did a very solid job this week, and we'll talk a bit more about him. There may be an argument that you play Doc or Newman in that back pocket, particularly Newman because of the way that he uses the ball short and gets the game going and rotate Kemp and Plowman on one side and then Kemp can rest forward, which is what he does for VFL. And maybe that is the chance because I reckon that that is long-term what will happen at Carlton Football Club. That third will be a swingman because all the top sides do it and it is a very, very important ingredient and probably the only ingredient Carlton lack. So I think Stocker is probably pole position. But I wouldn't be surprised to see another option, especially with all the smaller defenders we've got at the back. But it was a very good game from Stocker, and he put his, 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 he put his hand up. He put his hand up, and that's all you can ask. So Cameron asks, best effort of the year. What is impressive is everyone did their job. The improvement of O'Brien, Cottrell, Durden, Boyd, and TDK is a credit to them and the new coaching group. Spot on. And big Ben Lothborg. Palm, I said before the game, we're a mirror image of Melbourne. I believe we have to line up and scare the shit out of the rest of the competition. Spot on. How many of the boys are having career best years? Reflection on coaching and culture. Well, I think one of the big things is, when we talk about coaching, is the difference between the wording of Teague and Bolton. Bolton talked to them like they were babies, even the senior group. And I always thought that was a little bit of a risk for me. I, I, I'm not a fan of things like that. Also, Teague was very... Sometimes I thought overprotective of them. But also, again, I don't think he gave them the faith to go out. And I think one thing that we've seen with Voss is no matter what happens, he backs them in, he believes in them, and he sends them out on the way. And he's very vocal about that. He's very vocal about that. I did hear some intel this week um, that Vossi really called the midfield group into question. 
And there was a few bits of talk about that at the function that there was a real onus on them responding this week. And you saw them do it. And I do think that, you know, what they've really brought in is they've brought in a togetherness, a definition of roles, which makes it a lot easier to play football. It's easier in your workplace. If you have a clear guideline of what is expected of you and where you're going, it's very easy to perform. It's very easy. Now, as for career best years, it's quite interesting this because this is a list of names at the moment that if they plow on the way they're going to the end of the year, they will have statistically had in most of the key components career best years. But in their positions, these players I'm going to list off have had best years for position played in, the, in terms of their stats. So for argument's sake, you know, tackles for a small forward, this is their best year statistically. So let's rattle them out. And some of the names will surprise you. Adam Chera. Matt Co Mike, uh, Matty Cottrell, Charlie Kerner, TDK, Sam Doherty is actually on track for his AA year and to surpass it. Durden, Fisher, Hewitt, Bam Bam, Newman, Jack Noons, Lockie O'Brien, Matty Owies, Lockie Plowman, Adam Saad, Jack Silvani, Samuel Walsh, interesting enough, is gaining a lot of bests this year for where he is. And Lewis Young. So a lot of players there. Do you know what I mean? We've listed a lot of players there. And that is a big tale of where they are. And I think a big part of that is just purely the faith this system has in the players. So thank you very much for your questions, boys. Matty Bastow, how you doing? Pommy, how bloody good? Mate, it's the best feeling, my friend, Matt. Thank you very much for your question. What is the roof for this year? And when we get key personnel back, flag. No shit. Flag. And I think if you don't think that's a possibility, I question what the hell you're watching. Because at the moment, these boys are doing it with, what, 38 changes throughout the year, which is one of the most in the AFL. Huge. The fact that players are having to be polyfiller. We played two games with a third tour as a key backman. Do you know what I mean? We played one game with a guy that's only ever played third tour and then key back in training who's got a history of injuries for a whole game. We had to do that. We're playing with a baby Ruckman who is having to mature and learn on the job. Carlton have done a lot throughout the year. You've got to remember the first four rounds, Carlton didn't transition the ball, and then they were suddenly the number one transitional side in the comp. Then they started to lose their centre bounces and their scores from clearances the last four weeks. They've got it back. Carlton find a way to win, and there's been about six different avenues to victory all year. I would say, without being biased, the most impressive side in the AFL, if people are honest, is Carlton. Because they found new ways and new ways to skin a cat all the time. So for me, definitely a flag. And there's no reason why not. 2016 Dogs are a great example. Were talked about. They did it when it counted. 2017 Richmond hit their straps towards the back end of the year and looked unbeatable. Carlton are in a very similar boat as Richmond because it was a 50, very similar percentage. very More quarters won. I might add now Carlton have than them, but it was a very similar thing and a very similar game style of just go, go, go. And the way our game style is, that's how you play in finals all the time. No, no side plays it, and that's why Geelong always struggle. Very ball-retentive side. So very interesting. So I think definitely a flag could be the answer. One-two punch in the rook with Pitt and TDK. How dominant can this midfield be? I think very, and I think when you add Pitt and Ett back into it, even more deadly. Even more deadly because... When we looked at when Pitt and, and, and TDK worked well, it's the fact that they've got two polar opposite rook crafts. So I think when they come back, look out, look out. Jack Silvani is a superstar and doesn't get a credit. Spot on. This guy, where he's playing high half forward, his rook work is impeccable because he acts as an extra mid. And it's going to be very interesting, I think, when Pitt comes back because I think that rotation may stay at some points. And I actually think it will change into a midfield time because I think Voss will love the fact he stands up and makes it. And finally, Charlie is the king of Ligon Street. Mate, don't have to ask me. Go I mean. Pre-season, I said he was going to kick 75 plus and win the Coleman. He's the king of my heart. Thank you very much for your question, mate. What was the change from the first half to the second? Ask Raf. Good day to you, mate. I love your work. The biggest one from the first quarter to the second. Cowan did have dominance but was really that they started to block, particularly around stoppages. So TDK, JSOS were very good. Bam Bam was impeccable in this. And we talked about it at the start. Jack, Jack, Sam Walsh started doing that peel-back run and playing that one-two with Hewitt. 
once that happened, that was intense. Also, the forward line really did enact pressure. They were at the front of the ball all the time. And that was a big thing. Front and centre is a big issue with Carlton. They got luxury here that they were the worst defensive transition side they were against. You saw it in the first one. They caught us on the break twice. Carlton did have that last 10 minutes where they were very, very lethargic and very, very tentative. After that, they really did acquit themselves. And it's a very dangerous game style that Voss asked them to play. So the big major change there was pure commitment. Pure commitment to what they're about and what they've done. And that is a huge sign because the next two weeks, St. Kilda coming up and Eagles, you're going to have that luxury as well. You're going to be able to do it. So they're going to really drill this. And one thing that has been a staple of Voss is when they do it for two or three weeks, it becomes ingrained permanently. Very fast learners, this group. So I'm looking forward to it. So thank you very much for your question, mate. Chris Gillier, my boy. Love how Charlie looks. How he's not interested in the contest and kicks four. And then he sees the game played out. Mate, spot on. Mate, spot on. And let's have a look at Charlie's game, shall we? So there he is, the boy. Ten disposals, five marks, six score involvements, one tackle inside 50, four goals, two behind. What is really interesting is when I caught up with him at the uh, function, he did mention that there was a few times that he wanted to peel off the back of Grimes. Interesting this week that he backed himself in and did that. Charlie is an impeccable learner. And just from speaking to him for a brief foray, which where I was really knocking my knees and giggling like a girl, he has a clear understanding of what he's about and where he is. And this guy switched on. This guy is, without a doubt, the best forward in the comp. There's no competition for him. There's no competition. Best player in the league is Charlie Kerner by a long way. People were talking about Jeremy Cameron at the start of this week. Doesn't shine a light to this kid. Charlie Kerner can find a way to score in a million different ways where Jeremy Cameron can't. Head and shoulders, this guy, if he was on the free agency market, most expensive player in the league. Most expensive player in the league. And it's only going to go up. Not only going to go up because of the way he plays. Absolute terrifying prospect. It was an impeccable game this week because you saw a new way, a new avenue to go. Harry really did sacrifice his game to give these lanes, running lanes. Charlie has a degree in IQ. So great spot. He doesn't, fa he's very Berbatov, I find. If you remember watching him in round ball, kind of doesn't impact the game and then all of a sudden scores just through sheer creativity. That's what Charlie's like. Few gifted with his brilliance. So great question. We know I love Charlie. Kev Magpies, great win, especially after quarter time, which is positive. Big game coming up. You want to at least. You want to keep the consistency up week in, week out. Big thing for Carlton with consistency is continuity of injuries. Very hard. You've got to remember that the best time, best team structurally in the last decade have played together almost 70% of the season. Carlton haven't had that. And what I mean by that is you, your core group hasn't changed by over 70. Carlton are changing, what, two or three force changes every week. And it's all in the key areas, particularly around the midfield, down the back, where you want consistency. It's a real struggle, that, for Carlton to gain consistency because the players they bring in are so different to the players that they had. Do you know what I mean? Their skill sets. So a good example is Stocker and Boyd. Boyd is a lot more of a distributor by foot, smarter kick, where Stocker is a little bit more in and under and then hits that real flat kick and it's a lot more high risk where Boyd is a lot more safe with his kicking exits, particularly in the back pocket, which is very needed. And then you've also got to look at Plowman at the moment. It's playing that role, which probably would be McGovern. You're losing the intercepts. You're having to gain that from elsewhere. There's a lot of things there. So I agree with you. Count needs to get that consistency. The good thing from us is 90% of our players return in the next two rounds. So we're going to have real good last four rounds of consistency with these boys. So great question. Great spot. And uh, see you in finals, Kev. Alex Laird, my boy. Good mate of mine, Alex. Real good, knowledgeable football fan. Feels like Cripps is becoming less involved in games as of recently. Has his role changed at all? He's not kicking as many goals or getting as many touches, but it's understandable. He can't play at full place like he did round one to eight. I think what Cripps has had the last three rounds particularly is a more impactful, less goals, but more impactful around where it counts around the stoppages. And he's really trying to free players up. Playing a very prestier captain's role if you know what I mean, where he's sacrificing his own game, but getting the ball in key areas where other players can impact. And he's playing a real, real understated game here because he's given up a lot of these handballs now to Hewitt and Walsh particularly and allowing that combo. So you're right, he's not as impactful in the ways that we like. And I do think that 
we're in a super coach generation. Goals and disposals mean so much, but it's what they do with them. But if we actually take a look at him, Alex, let's have a look at his game. There he is, 22 touches, five tackles, five marks, 27 pressure acts, eight clearances. We're seeing more of a return to the 2018 Cripper, where we were asking, fuck, we need someone to help him. And he's now got the help. And now you're seeing, I actually think this is Cripp's best role. Carlton will dominate a lot of games when he's been a menace in stoppages and clearances. 27 pressure acts. He didn't let their very talented midfield get much of it. Fife was thrown there. He was negligible. Sarong was negligible. Um, Brayshaw was non-existent. Will Brody, particularly, their dynamo this year, did nothing. And that was Cripps. Cripps and Hewitt did a lot of that. And Hewitt was the beneficiary of a lot of Cripps' hard work. So Walsh's 40 touches, half of them came from this guy because Hewitt was one of the providers and Cripps got the dirty ball. So I agree with you. He's probably not doing the game that gets the brown low, which is a shame. However, what annoys me about that is this game is, I think, more impactful than when he kicks four goals and we don't have midfield dominant. So if you go back to like 2019, that Brisbane game, this is a lot more impactful for me as a team because this is going to bring players into the team. So a selfless effort from Cripps, very Cochin-esque. And for me, Cochin went from being one of the leading disposal getters to being more of an acute, more of a, a metronome in that midfield. And Cripps is one of the best metronomes in the comp. Very valuable player playing like this. Let's see what we got next then. Sean Darcy taking over from Mumford in the Flog Stakes. Needs to be called out by Christian. Mate, I agree with you. I did enjoy, did anyone see in the second quarter where TDK, for no reason at all, went up two-footed and hit him in the ribs and then just took the free kick and just smiled at him. He's, he's a very dirty ruckman. Um, I'm not a fan of it, but part of me is. But it seems to be against us. He's definitely one of them players that I think Carlton would love. And I think Pitonet is the right kind of mongrel. Um... For me, I think Darcy is a bit like Mumford in the terms of he gets too invested. Which is why Carlton battered it. Because Sean Darcy will be disappointed. He should have battered TDK and bodied him. But he got too focused on being a thug. And that allowed TDK to distract him long enough for Carlton to dominate. So I agree with you, Christian. He's becoming a bit of a prick, in he, to say it a bit worse. But I mean, he does look like the standard guy that kicks you out of every all you can eat, doesn't he? You know, he does look like he works the... Oh, it does look like he works security. You know, the kids' rides, doesn't he? What a melt. Cheers, Christian. Leg dog, my boy. Zach Fisher filling in for Chera. Discuss. Also carve out 29 minutes for Lob Chat. We will do, my friend. We will do. But let's have a look at your friend, Zach Fisher. So there we are. Zach Fisher did almost mirror Adam Chera's time around the ground. So he played a lot of time on the wing. Bit of time on the ball. I think it was the, uh, I think it was the 10. Stoppage and centre clearances he attended. Uh, 29 disposals, 3 tackles, 7 marks, 5 score involvements, 5 inside 50s. Excellent this. And this is great for Carlton because he is a midfielder. Teague was wrong. He is a midfielder who happens to be in the forward line. Playing at high half forward, getting him involved in the wing in the midfield. He's very talented. And he's also very crafty. He laid some very important tackles. Two of them tackles were very important tackles. He chases hard and he puts pressure on the kicker. Uh, he was a real conduit, kept the ball moving. And this is what we said last week. We miss Chera because Chera keeps the ball in motion. Sometimes last two weeks before this week, Carlton became stagnant, started handballing for the sake. Fisher makes something happen. It's a great spot, Leck Dog. Very good game. And that's an additional rotation that Carlton have just found with the Chera injury, which then opens that wing up because then they've really got some options on that wing because the top sides... Genuinely, you watch rotate four players on the wing for different events. Now, Fisher's just put his name in it. Excellent game from Fish, and he's having a real good year. Jamie, Sam Walsh gave me a stiffy. Can you talk about him for a few minutes? Mate, don't need Viagra when you've got Walsh. Tell you what, Jamie, do better than that. Let's have a look. So here's Sam Walsh's game. The most touches he's ever had, 40 touches, 19 pressure acts, 7 clearances, 6 score involvements and 11 inside 50s. And a big keynote of this game is we said it pre-game. What Walsh needs to do is when the ball is won in the centre and the stoppages, he needs to double back, go defence side 
and link up with Hewitt. And he did this for about 17 of the touches. And this is where Walsh's game is good. When he's on the motion, getting the ball and being out the back. He's almost like Tom Brady in the pocket as a quarterback. If we can get him there, his link-up play and his ability to bring players into the game is second to none. Sam Walsh as a midfielder pisses all over players like Brayshaw and Neil who get a lot of kudos. Walsh has got it all. Walsh is the complete player. And I prefer it when he's not as advanced and he's more in that metronome. Playing that Andrea Perlo role for Italy where he's kind of the provider pinging passes. This is Walsh's best game as an accumulator. For me, I think future for him is the Tom Mitchell role. That role. And I think he's going to have 40 very impactful touches because this is what he does. He sees the pass. He sees the breakaway. He sets us up very well. And this is what you saw. If you can get him in and around the ball, that Cripps-Hewitt-Walsh combination, I think is the best in the league. And I think that's the big three. And I think that Bam Bam there is going to be used more of a stopper as he was this week. And that's very important for him. But great spot. Walsh was sensational, Jamie. So hopefully you enjoy that. He was He's another level. He's another level. Mark Eunice. Good day to you, Mark. How you doing, my friend? A lot of talk about long me being coach of the year's season. Rightfully so. Why isn't Voss in the discussion? Through adversary, he's playing still contending for a top four. Easily the coach of the year. Easy. He's had it the hardest of anyone. They're coming from... Hey, you! Are you subscribed or are you a returning Pominoza? Good day if you're a returning Pominoza. Just to let you know, please hit the like button. Smash that subscribe button. It's road to 3K. We're trying to get there before the end of the season. We're well on track. You can go a step further as well. In the link in the comments, if you are an IRS, you have to click it. You can become a member of the channel. We sponsor Domaku. We sponsor Shannon Gore. We give back to the community. And it really does help the content channel out as well. It really does help sustain a lot of things. So if that's something you want to do, no obligation, please do it. Good day if you are returning Pominoza there. Back to the video though and enjoy. Much love. A worse position. Do you know what I mean? They're coming from a real far back position. Fremantle were really unlucky probably not to play finals last year. They really did show some positivity. Carlton are coming from dog shit and he's got them competing with the best in the league. Voss for me is easily, easily the best coach in the competition. And we had another one here from the rant. Many yes pluses beside the obvious. Fish best game. Played with physicality. Tagged five. It was spot on. TDK best game lob. Kemp looked good. Boyd again. See, and this is it, Mark, to answer your question. He's got the best out of these players that we, we've been questioning for a while. Lob's been questioned. Cotters has been questioned. Noon's always questioned. Keeping width, like he says. TDK. The team defense is a key thing here for, as well from... Rob, what you're saying about no one ever did that. Teague used to talk about it. Now there is a real buy-in. So spot on, Mark and Rob. Nailed it as always. Easily the coach of the year. Mickey D, on current form, rank Cottrell, O'Brien and Hughes. How do they stack up with the wingers? Do they make any starting lineup? Well, I would say three noons, two Cottrell, one O'Brien. O'Brien would play. In all the teams. Without a shadow of doubt. Currently, I'm still working through it. There's going to be a video coming up later this week if we can find time. But I've redefined TPI to create the AFL's proper power rankings and positions. But he would be a top five wingman in the comp easily with the way he's playing. If you look at the key metrics, and we'll talk about that in this video. Cottrell's going really well. Um, playing a little bit. And Noon's, it's hard to say because he plays all around the ground even though he's on the Noon. And even though he's he is a winger, he plays all around. And I think it's a very defined role. But I would say O'Brien would be in all 18. All 18. I can't think of two winging combinations that he wouldn't wing, win because of just what he's doing. But let's go and have a look as well at the other questions. So great question, Mickey. We've got Brian Maloney. Cotch was becoming very important. How are you liking his involvement and role? Absolutely love it, mate. Drew Bakes. Didn't I tell you and tell us how good he You did, mate. Um, but look, he will be better than anyone in one and two years. What do you reckon about O'Brien? Well, you know that I'm a big fan ever since you mentioned it to me. We've got Jared. Have you seen a better disposal by foot? He's up there, isn't he? When do we start treating as our best 22 cotters? Ask, ask Jordan, mate. Good question. Let's have a look what else we've got. Wit, the gorgeous wit. No, no question, but how nice is it just a match committee? Again, spot on. 
They back Cots, Boyd, and a few others. Have always thought Lob was a gun. He's finally shutting the others up. Spot on. So these are all great questions from you guys and girls. All right. So let's do it because you know that I love a wing. I love a wing. So let's go. So let's look at Lockie O'Brien. So these are probably the key most numbers that you look for. Now, when you do scouting in soccer, which I am a part of with TPI, one of the things you look for is you break down positions to core stats that the greats have. Um, and it's not individual stats. It's ones that add to what their role is. So particularly someone like a winger in AFL, it's not so much about their game. It's what them stats do to the greater good. And that's the KPIs of winning football matches. So for a winger, you're looking at disposals with high kicking efficiency, meters gained, inside 50, score involvements, kilometers run, goals. But let's just break it down to five basic ones for us to understand. This was his game here. Now, he was compared to Ed Langdon, who, for me, him and Amon are the two best in the league. Nailed it. These are phenomenal numbers. Phenomenal numbers. And the fact that he was starting, O'Brien starting to get the cuts for now, to get inside 50, very deadly. Because his running, he lost his man, right? So they play Sarong, Brayshaw quite often on the wing. Do you know what I mean? They really do rotate it. Blake Akers wasn't there, but Mundy gets a float through there. They heavily float it. Jordan Clark goes up there. He he outran them all, playing 90% on the wing. That is insane. That is insane. And this kid now, we're starting to really utilize his wing. And it's so important to Voss's system because if you want a team defense, you've got to keep your width. If you keep your width, you keep your shape. If you keep your width and your shape, it's very easy to condense sides into the key areas that Carlton want to defend. And this is important. O'Brien is probably, for me, one of the best in the league this year, particularly the last five rounds. Right? Let's have a look at someone else. Matty Cottrell. So Matty Cottrell was a phenomenal game. 17 touches, 283 metres gained, two inside 50 score involvements and two goals. Brilliant. And he played a lot across half forward, which allowed Fisher to go in the midfield. And this was brilliant from him because I said I'd love to see him play high half forward. I don't like playing three taller blokes in there. I think you need a smaller one. If you look at Papley, Papley does really well. Traditionally an undersized guy, they often float him at high half forward and he causes devastation with his direct running lanes. Brilliant running lanes, one of the most meters ran in the competition this week in, in, in the round. Absolute fearless running, tireless running, selfless ball use. And he's always there for them one-twos. And that is so important in Teague's game plan, looking for that overlap run. Cottrell, like you say, boys and girls, no longer a sub. Now he's one of the guys, one of the guys. And finally, we'll look at my boy, Jack Noons. Look at him. Shirt too small for him. 20 touches, 288 metres gained, five inside 50s, three score involvements, one goal, one. This guy is understated because he plays like 30-30-30 across the lines covering everyone. When Doc moves, when Newman moves a bit higher up the ground, he's there. Real defensive type wingman, and I really enjoyed his game. He's really starting to add that repertoire. It was a great game for his milestone game, and he's an unsung hero at Cowan. He reminds me a lot of um, someone like Cade Simpson, in the terms of we don't give him enough respect, and you'll miss him if he's not there, because that's going to take other guys who are more talented off to fill these roles. And this is why he's good, because he's a solid 7 out of 10 wherever he plays. So, Jack Nooms, God loves you, brother. So, thanks for your questions, guys and girls. Josh Doolard, today's midfield effort was standard. That needs to be set and expected week in, week out. Spawn, Josh. And the fact that they were so pressured to the ball, the pressure acts were good. And particularly the forward half allowed them to do that. So, let's not forget, them tackles inside 50, we dominated it. 17 tackles inside 50, I believe. Insane. Because it makes the ball coming out of rebound 50 shit, which makes it a lot easier to defend. The problem the last two weeks is it's been quality because of the lack of intensity in that forward half, which has meant the midfield is really stuck. It gives them chance to reset, gives them chance to get in place. It's a very structural system that Vossi plays, particularly being team defense, team offense. It's a great spot, Josh, but huge credit has to go to the forward line. Without that forward line, that midfield is at sixes and sevens. But the midfield was dominant. They did the right thing. They flooded the channels. They worked hard together. And great spot. Great spot, Josh. A lot here. Don Pang, my friend from Japan. I thought TDK brought aggression. We haven't seen. A couple of times I saw him really trying to assert himself over Darcy. 
as growth of how he's performed in Perth. Do you agree it's the best game? Mate, spot on. It's easily his best game. Tony, good day to you. What do you think of TDK's game? Big step today, spot on. And is TDK turning into the athletic beast? He definitely is. And you know what? There's there's a real sign that Cruiser's working with him to answer all your questions with that mongrel. Cruiser was exceptional at his body position and his body work, right? And he could play athletic met Ruckman, but also play against real strong Ruckman because he positioned his body well. And TDK did that this week. And let's take a look at TDK's game. And as we can see, 22 hit outs, 36.4% to advantage, 34.41, 10 pressure acts, and 7 defensive pressure acts. And what I love about him is he's slotting in now. This was a very Max Gorn-like game that he fell behind. When the stoppage was won, he didn't run ahead. He, he stayed back in case it came back. Very key note. That's something that Max Gorn does incredibly well. And he's a very key component of Melbourne's forward pressure. And the second thing he did was his ability to get the ground ball and run off. He did that once and he ignored Walsh and he took off and got us a goal from it. He was very clever with Darcy because he played Darcy's game. And although he got bodied a few times, when he puts on 4KGs, that won't happen. He was in the way. He got in the way. He freed it up. An absolute stellar game by TDK. And he's really developing in our eyes. There was an article saying that he's an 800k footballer. I don't think that is it yet. I think he's definitely the secondary Ruckman. He's doing very well as the first Ruckman, but I think when Pitternet comes back, this guy's going to go up. It's going to be a little bit like Tim English when Martin got there. He's going to shoot up because you're going to see the other strings to his bow. And I think that Cal and I are going to be playing a 50% Ruck between these two. And when he does, I reckon this guy's going to go to a stratosphere you don't think possible. I'm glad I was wrong about TDK. I absolutely love how he's built. And he's had to do it death by a thousand cuts, isn't it, really? As they say. He's had to do it. And he's stepped up, taking his opportunity. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Grant Spicer. Under pressure. Dun, 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 dun. I think Cowton tackling is the key to win him. They grinned Fremantle. They grinded Fremantle with forward pressure. Spawn. And that is it. Forward pressure. All them tackles. Making it hard. Shit ball outside of rebound 50. Being rebound inside 50s for Carlton. That is the keynote. It allows you to reset. It allows you to structure up behind the ball. When it's quick ball, Carlton are in trouble. And that's something that they did. Next week is going to be really important. Because I think that against St. Kilda, they can do it. And talking about St. Kilda, let's have a look at that. The legend that is Anthony. How much do I think? I think this is a great game for Carlton, Anthony. And I think Carlton will win this again by about 30 plus. I think that they play out wide. Carlton like teams that go out wide because that's how they lay their traps. We defend the width really well. And it's what we talked about Fremantle. They look to escape the corridor very quickly. Carlton dominate that area. So I think this match is a match made in heaven, especially the way Carlton counter punch. Carlton will really enjoy it. How do we fit Chera, Owies, Pitnett and Wheater in next week? Well, I mean, I think that Wheater in may come in for Kemp. I would like to see Wheater in come in uh, for Boyd and really give Newman that back pocket role like he played a bit this week. I'd say Chera probably comes in. I'd say maybe Noons is the unlucky one this week. However, I have heard, I, I do believe Kennedy got a knock, so it may be a straight swap. Owies... It's going to be tough to drop Motlop, but I would like to see Motlop go back and work on his VFL craft. It was a stellar game, and it was typical Motlop. I said it at the start of the game. Motlop used to do that for Colts, be dog shit in the Colts, play seniors and tear it up. But I do think he just, he's just he got that taste. Keep him hungry. So that's probably how I would do it. I would say Voss will probably go Kemp out, Wheatering in if he's fit. Pittenet in, I would say that he probably is going to have to drop... Maybe, maybe you told Backman, maybe he drops a plow. Do you know what I mean? It'd be stiff, but that might be the way that he does it and really tries to keep that aesthetic, um, which may say Kemp stays in, because if you keep Kemp in there, you've got that rotation in the forward half. Chera, I think, will probably come out for a mid. I think maybe Kennedy looked a bit sore and evidently has been a con to reports nursing it. I think that's stiff, but I think that might be it. And always, I'd imagine, would come in from Motlop. But interesting. It's tough. I'm glad it's not my fucking job. Let's be honest. So we've got a load here. The returning cavalry. So Aidan, McGovern, Williams, Wheatering, Martin, all coming back soon. Marchbank, who would you take out? It's tough. I mean, I'd say it's between McGovern and Kemp for me. We'll talk a bit more about that. But 
I like it. Williams, it's going to be tough. I mean, let, to be answer your question, I think it'd be game by game. Game by game. I think all of them, apart from Wheat, are in. And that, I'm not actually, apart from Wheat, would have to go through the VFL. And then it's a case of we're a top team then. Like Melbourne, it's next cab off the rank. Durden's first year, says Dan Bree. Kemp's first games. Honey tried hard. Mott Lop showed pressure. Cottrell, O'Brien, Noons, Fisher. All listening to the Vossi blueprint and showing the results. How good in finals when we have four Ruckman and all the back line and forwards licking their lips. Mate, when this returning cavalry comes in, look out. We're winning games with half a side. With half a side. If Chera comes back, who should be dropped? Um, you know what? I just think because Kennedy's been quiet the last two weeks, even though he's acting as the blocker, we saw Cripps really take that role on here. I would like to see how that midfield looks with an extra creative in there. I'd love to see Chera and Fisher and Walsh in one rotation. You see Melbourne do it. They go really aggressive. They go really aggressive. They go smaller and really aggressive and quick in that with Petrarca, Harm slots in there. Do you know what I mean? They sometimes throw Fritch back as well. Do you know what I mean? And Clary. I'd love to see a Cripps, Fisher, Chera, Hewitt combo in there just for a few rotations, see what happens. I think Carlton could really hurt teams. And Faz, my boy, how does Wheatering fit back in this? I think Wheatering for Kemp would probably be the thing, but I would love to see them be bold. Go Wheatering for pl for Boyd and play Newman in that back pocket because him and Doc rotated through that um, quite heavily towards the end of the game when Boyd went off. But also we saw it throughout the game when Doc goes up around the stoppages. So it'd be interesting to see what they do, but I'd love to see that. But great questions, boys. Love it. My mate, Syaf, why are you a fine specimen? Don't know, I've put on a few kegs. I saw that picture from the thing, so there may be some content of me trying to drop the weight again. I've become too comfortable. Look a right mess, but thank you very much, Say. If your support, like everyone, goes very good, and it's very good for my mind and my well-being, so I love you all. Mitcho, what did you think of Plowman's game? I've read a lot of comments saying it was poor. thought he played his role fine. Mitch, this guy could cure cancer, and people say, why didn't he cure COVID? Let's have a look at him. So it wasn't a game that you look at and you go, wow. But 12 touches, 91.7 efficiency, very important when you're playing back pocket. This is one of the key facets when you play back pocket because you are literally in the shit when you get the ball. Three spoils, four ground ball gets, very important. Three defensive pressure acts. Now, a large part of this, 48% of the game, he was on Fife when Fife was in the forward line. Did you see Fife? Tough customer, Fife. It's like when Cripps goes up forward. I liked his game. I liked his game. Now, the only thing that I'll go against Plowman is I don't think he intercepts enough. So I would say there is a great thing, and we'll come on to it because I'm looking forward to talking about it when we get to Kemp just coming up. But him coming out for Kemp, we are in playing, and then Newman and Doc rotating in that back pocket. I like that moving forward. So we'll have a look at that. But it wasn't a bad game, and he, he does what he says. You didn't see his person, so I liked it. Alex, again, what did you think of Young's game? Being phenomenal, both one-on-one -on -one and intercept. Honest, have loads of faith in him next week, dealing with Max King. And let's look at it. 13 touches, one intercept mark, three marks, 13 spoils, 83.3% win percentage. I think he's the perfect matchup um, for Max King because Max King likes to bully airily. And this guy gets spoils first. And I think that's key. And that's why I'm suggesting... Maybe we start playing Newman or Doc in that back pocket. Purely because they have good pressure numbers. But they could react to the spoils a little bit better. So it'd be an option to try. But Young, going along nicely. Going along nicely. Really starting to command the area. You saw him berate a few players as well this week when they made mistakes. Doc was at the receiving end. Love that. And if you're waiting, you're looking at your little kid brother here and going, I love it. I love it. I'm coming back to you developed. These two, I, I think these two will be the best two. Last year, everyone was talking about Lever, May, and uh, Petty as the best combo in the comp. I think Wheat are in, and Kemp slash McGovern and Young would be an even better three combo. So I look forward to that. Great question, Alex, and he's going along nicely. This guy is a finals footballer as well. Kempy, Chris Galea, love how Kemp is not afraid to switch the play and break the lines. Once he gets a few AF games, he'll be a threat. Spot on. What a Walsh, what a gun. I was really impressed with Kemp today. Look the goods. Does he hold his spot when Wheatering comes back? For me, he does. Kemp was really good, says Hank. What a role. 
young, what a fine young is. What, what a fine young is. Well, let's have a look at his game. 15 touches, 2 intercept marks, 7 spoils, 8 marks, 57.1% win percentage. He got battered in the first quarter by Tabana. And what we always get excited about by Walsh is he can lose the battle but win the war. And this is what he did. He won the battle after this. And he really learned from experience. He got his positioning right. He really focused himself. He managed to start blocking the run. Started getting there first. And like you say, his ability to switch and set up play. I would, if I was picking the team, would play him over Plowman. And then play Newman and Doc in that back pocket role while Boydie is out. And seeing how that goes. I think that's a very fearsome thing. Because I think this is the McGovern with reliability. He doesn't get injured. And he's a lot better player than McGovern. A lot better footballer. A hell of a lot better. And I'll take that to the bank. He is a far more creative footballer. So I think we found one. And I don't mind the next two weeks just giving him three games. Do you know what I mean? Give him three games in that role. We know Plowman's good. So send Plowman down to VFL. Work with Dom and stuff. And get him and them really up to speed of what it takes. Because I think Brody Kemp's the one. And I really like what I'm seeing of him. So great spots, guys. Love it. Paul Black, we played excellent with our injury list. Props to Voss. Really showed how good we are. Happy at the moment. Spawn. And this next man up that Voss keeps talking about is really poignant, isn't it? You're really seeing it. You're really seeing what he's on about. They are really stepping up. These players as well. Geek shout out to Daniel O'Keefe in the VFL as well. These guys play that VFL role. They come in. They know it. They do it. They execute. So spot on. Great spot. Injuries going well. Cameron, McKay's pressure in the forward 50 was massive. Mate, great spot, Cameron. I'm glad we get to talk about this. Few forwards in the comp his size put pressure on. Four tackles inside 50, five tackles gained, five score involvements, three marks, nine disposals, two goals, two. If he can do this, this was a ve this reminded me of prime Kennedy and Darling, right? You know that they're, they're focused. They're, they're working together. Harry was selfless all game and really created that space for... Kerno to run in behind. But that pressure really made their toes give the ball up. You saw their toes, Pierce and Lug particularly, they were giving it up quickly because this guy was clattering in and chasing hard. And that is a huge thing. That sets the precedent. If you see a 200 centimetre juggernaut do it, you're a small, how dare you not do it? It's a great spot, mate. Love your question. Harry was impeccable. And we finish with Paul Morgan. My mate, how are you doing? Just a comment from me, Pom. Good to win of the year. Severely undermanned. Burnt by pricks in yellow all day against the top four side. R written off by everyone. Massive pressure to make equal second on the ladder and get it done by five odd goals. Real. Unreal. Spot on, mate. Ye beauty, Pom. They did the business for me. 49 and feeling fine. Happy birthday, Captain Jack, mate. Much love. And someone good. Great win. Spot on. It was, for me, the best win of the year. Best win of the year. And honestly, we've really set a precedent. And that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much for your questions and your comments. You guys and girls are the best. Let me know what you thought of the game and what you enjoyed. I'll see you on Wednesday. Go and check my wife's business out, Quacking Cauldron. Get some trinkets. Get some good luck things. Um, she's there for all your advice as well. Much love. Palm out.